I am often asked what my favorite speaker is that I've reviewed so far. And the easiest and most honest answer for that is I don't have a single favorite one. I've got quite a bit. And if money were no object and I could buy any system that I wanted to, I wouldn't buy just one. I'd buy like three or four or five. And I'd put them all in separate rooms because even though some speakers measure great, they measure great in different areas. And they still have distinctions between them that make them different enough from another speaker that I would want to own different ones for different reasons. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my personal top five favorite speakers of all time, at least thus far that I have personally reviewed and laid ears on myself. So let's go. I'll quickly go over some of the highlights of why I like each of these speakers. And if you're interested in more detail, please make sure to watch the full review or read the full review on my website at aaronsaudiocorner.com. I'll have a couple links in the description below. While all these speakers are different in how they sound and how they measure to at least some degree, the one common trait is that they all have good linear on-axis performance or pretty dang close to on-axis performance and really good off-axis performance. First up is the Dutch & Dutch 8C. This speaker retails at about $14,000 per pair. It is a powered active speaker that comes with XLR analog input or digital input. This speaker is very, very different from all the other speakers on this list because it is a cardioid design. And in simple summary, a cardioid design directs all of the sound toward the front of the speaker and very, very little sound to the rear of the speaker, where most speakers will generally have sound directed to the back of them below about four or 500 hertz, depending on the size of the speaker and namely the width of the baffle. This speaker has technology that will cancel out the sound that goes around to the side and to the back of the speaker in the mid range. And really what this seemed to result in, in my experience was for one, much more even bass response in the room Rather than having wild variations in the bass response like you typically have below the Schroeder frequency, which is normally around four or 500 hertz in most rooms, you have very smooth, even response, even from seat to seat. Another thing that I found really interesting about this speaker was the depth of the soundstage. I didn't expect that to really change. And frankly, I thought if anything, it might suffer because in my head, I was expecting that the depth would be more attributed to the rear wall reflection. But since this particular speaker can be placed so close to a wall, there really wasn't any reflection to cancel out any sound. So you didn't have to pull the speaker way out from the room to get that rear wall reflection that might otherwise create depth. Instead, the speaker was already placed at the wall and it was just already deep physically. The speaker had a pretty wide sound stage. And the other thing is that again, because you could place it so close to a wall, thanks to the cardioid design, there was so much bass reinforcement that it got down to about plus 15 decibels at 30 hertz in my room. This is a true full range speaker from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with tons of bass output capability with only using two 8 inch woofers on the back. As we can see, the CEA 2034 data shows us a really smooth on axis response and really neutral off axis responses as well with really great directivity through the mid range and then through the high frequency. So. That means that you can equalize the speaker to do pretty much whatever you want with great results. And another factor about the speaker that's really cool is you can integrate it with REW, take measurements, and then load those from REW into the speaker directly and get rid of the room modes or get, well, you can't completely get rid of them, but help remedy some of the room mode issues, but also tailor the sound to however you like via EQ. This is the horizontal radiation, and it shows the speaker is at about plus or minus 60 to about plus or minus 50 degrees, depending on which frequency you're looking at, which is right in line with where I prefer the stereo width to be for a particular horizontal radiation pattern of a speaker. Up second on the list is the Revel F226BE. Now, this is a floor standing speaker. It features two six and a half inch midwoofers, a five inch mid range, and a one inch beryllium dome tweeter. Retail price is about $7,500 per pair. It features great linear response. And as you can see from this data, backs that up. I will note that this was one of the first speakers that I reviewed early on, and I didn't have the Clipple near field scanner. This speaker took me about 12 hours to measure alone 
and you can't imagine the stuff that I went through to make sure I got good, accurate data for it. But nonetheless, I wound up getting there, and what we see is a really good speaker with really good response linearity. This is the horizontal radiation pattern, and it's not quite the same format as I currently use. Again, early test, but you can discern that it's about plus or minus 60 degrees, give or take, on the horizontal axis, which again, is right exactly where I prefer my speaker's radiation to be. Third on the list is the JBL 4367. It retails for about $16,000 per pair and is a three-way design featuring a 15-inch midwoofer and a three-inch mid-range with a one-inch compression driver basically rolled up together into one into the horn that you see at the top of the speaker. It is a passive design with a sensitivity of about 93 decibels. It's pretty awesome. It has superb linearity, superb output, and superb dynamic capability. As you can see in this data, it has pretty dang good extension. So I would say that in room, it will go about 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz, no problem. And you almost don't need a subwoofer unless you need that very last bit of response below 30 hertz. The horizontal radiation though on this speaker is different from all the other ones that I preferred in that it's much more narrow at about plus or minus 40 degrees. This speaker has excellent, excellent dynamic range as evidenced by this compression data. Fourth on my list is the KEF Reference One Meta. It is a $9,000 passive three-way design which features a six and a half inch midwoofer, a five inch coincident mid-range with a one inch tweeter located inside that mid-range in a coaxial fashion. This speaker has incredible linearity for a passive speaker. One of the things that I love most about this speaker is it had an incredible, 3D soundstage. I mean, the depth and the width were just superb. Now, the width isn't quite as wide as I normally like a speaker to be at about plus or minus 50 to about plus or minus 45 degrees, as we see here. But going back to the frequency response in the CEA2034 data, we can see that the linearity on axis and off axis is really impeccable. And I believe it's about plus or minus one and a half dB throughout. Another really key feature about this particular design is that being a coincident driver, you have a lot of variability in where you place your ear above and below the speaker. So it really widens that sweet spot to where there's not a precise location that you have to plant and park your head in when you want to listen to music. If you want to turn around or if you want to sit up a little bit, you're not really going to lose a lot of the features that make the speaker sound so great in terms of soundstage imaging and timbre. Bringing up the rear on this list is the Wharfdale Linton 85. This retails for about $1,500 per pair without the stands or with the stands around $2,000. And I've seen the price fluctuate with the stands to as low as about $1,600 per pair. It is a passive design with an eight inch midwoofer, a five inch mid-range and a one inch dome tweeter. And this speaker is designed to be used with the grill on. The Wharfdale Linton 85 is bar none, one of my favorite speakers and Personally, just completely subjectively speaking, I think the best value in any speaker, period. And that also accounts for some of my favorite little budget speakers like the Emotiva B1 Plus and maybe the Numi. So those speakers are like $100 or $300. But if you can spend the $1,500 when these guys are on sale, you can't touch the performance of this particular speaker in my personal opinion. It has so much going for it. The only issue that I really could complain about with this particular speaker is that around the upper mid-range area there was just a little bit of attack missing and it's usually about two to three kilohertz and i can see that in this data that we're looking at here you can see a little bit of a dip in that upper mid-range area but other than that i really thought the speaker performed great tonally the soundstage radiation is very wide and it's wider even than the Dutch and Dutch 8C or the Revel that I talked about earlier. It's about plus or minus 70 degrees wide. And it's kind of getting to that point where it might almost be too wide for some rooms. There are some speakers that I've listened to that are about plus or minus 80, maybe even plus or minus 90. And those speakers are just too wide. There's just too much room involvement. But these speakers don't quite get there. They are very, very wide. Now, they aren't as precise as a more narrow radiating speaker, but personally speaking, I like a wider radiating speaker and I'm willing to deal with some image precision trade-off to get that soundstage width that I just really enjoy. And that does it for my personal top five. I told you it was going to be a quick list. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. If you find yourself wanting to buy any of these speakers for whatever reason, hey, that would be cool if you want to do that. Please consider using one of my generic affiliate links, Amazon, Crutchfield, Audio Advice, 
And in doing so, it will help me earn a small commission. Now, I don't provide a direct link to any of these because that's not what this video is about. But again, they're generic links. If you want to purchase anything through them, doesn't matter what it is, that would help me out and would be a great way to support what I'm trying to do here. Those affiliate links will be in the description below as well. Also, if you want to support this channel via Patreon, that would be cool. Patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. But I hope this kind of gives you some insight into my personal subjective evaluation and the things that I'm looking for in a speaker. For instance, most of the speakers that you saw here are going to be great linearity on and off axis. That's key. That's number one. I also like a wide soundstage radiation pattern. So I like about plus or minus 50 to plus or minus 60 degrees. That's kind of that sweet spot for me. The 4367 by JBL, great linearity, but very narrow soundstage width. Well, relatively speaking, but the dynamic range, the compression being so low and the output capability being so high, those factors are able to overcome my preference for the width of radiation. So this really is all a game of preferences and trade-offs. There really is no perfect speaker. There's just the more perfect speaker for whatever it is that you prefer. But the data helps get us there a lot more quickly rather than just trying to guess. And instead of using eloquent terms to describe lush mid-range or chocolatey bass or doo-doo highs, whatever. I like to look at data and I hope you understand how to correlate some of that data now with my own personal preferences. I will see y'all in the next video. Take care. Peace.